So it's 2 a.m. and you're laying alone on your couch watching reruns, and suddenly your phone lights up with a message from a friend who needs a copy of a very important document that is sitting on your Cheeto dust covered coffee table for some reason. So you go to take a picture of it with your phone, but you realize your crappy built-in phone camera and the poor lighting from the dingy bare bulb hanging from the ceiling just aren't cutting it. So decisively, you dash to your PC and use your flatbed scanner. And as you sit there, listening to the whirling of the scanning mechanism and pondering how your life got to this point, you find yourself asking, how the heck do these things work anyways? Great question! Your typical scanner uses something called a charge coupled device, or CCD, to determine what's on the page. The main idea here being that the CCD can convert light into an electrical charge, which it then sends to your computer as digital data. So when you start scanning a document, that bright light that you see coming from inside, typically from either a xenon lamp or a cold cathode, which as you may know is similar to what people used in PC case lighting a few years back, hits the sheet of paper and is reflected back to a series of mirrors underneath the glass surface and then focused by a lens onto an array of CCD sensors. Since darker areas of the page containing things like text and clip art will reflect less light than the blank, usually white areas, the CCD array will see these differences, which will show up as an accurate image of your document on your computer screen. If you've ever had a scan of something bulky and had to leave the lid open a little bit, you'll have noticed the scan is black in areas that aren't covered by anything. This is because nothing's there to reflect the light, though modern software is often smart enough to crop these areas out for you. CCD arrays are also what determine a scanner's true resolution. The more sensors in the array, the more points of light it can capture, and the more pixels it can send to your computer. If you're in the market for a scanner, make sure to check that the resolution on the spec sheet is the hardware resolution that reflects the true capabilities of the CCD array, not some fake number achieved through software trickery like interpolation that uses average values of nearby pixels to approximate a higher pixel count image. But what about color scanning? This uses additional lenses and built-in color filters to separate the scan into red, blue, and green versions, which are then processed to determine what the actual colors of your original document are. Although this is usually done with just one pass of the scanner, some older models lack these additional lenses and so need multiple passes to complete a color scan, which is why they were much slower in color mode. But not every consumer level scanner works this way. There are also flatbeds that use something called a contact image sensor or CIS instead of these CCDs. These are simpler in construction, use an array of LEDs to shine light on the document so an image sensor can essentially take a snapshot of it like you were trying to do on the table with your cell phone, but better. Although the scans from the CIS are typically lower quality than CCD scanners, CIS is a cheaper, more lightweight, and more efficient technology, so you'll find it in a lot of small, portable scanners that can be powered solely from a USB port instead of requiring a wall outlet. Of course, there are other types of scanners out there such as expensive drum scanners with high dynamic range for professional applications, as well as 3D scanners, which you can learn more about right up here. But hopefully this episode has given you a little insight into how your scanner at home works and let us know down in the comments down below if you'd like to see a future episode on what scanner to buy. Are you racing against the clock as a freelancer? Challenging, yes, but with the growth of the internet there's never been more opportunities for the self-employed to meet this need. Check out FreshBooks cloud accounting software. It's a simple and easy way to be more productive, organized, and to more importantly, get paid quickly. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. Set up online payments with just a couple of clicks and get paid up to four days faster. There's also my favorite feature. You can see when a client has seen your invoice and put an end to the guessing games. FreshBooks is offering a 30 day unrestricted free trial to our viewers. To claim it, go to freshbooks.com techwiki and enter techwiki in the how did you hear about us section.
All right, guys, if you like this video, like it, if you dislike it, dislike it, comment down below for other stuff that we should cover on this channel. Um, follow this channel with the subscribe button. Hit the little bell there. That lets you know every single time we get a new video. Also, check out Channel Super Fun. They're probably doing something hilarious over there. They usually are. And I'm going to roll out like a drum scanner.